are streaming. We are streaming. I hit the wrong button. All right, Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn of the word of truth that is given to us, to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Son, through the Father, whose name is Yahushua. All honor goes to the Father, through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace, through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in, but no peace, no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's go ahead and open up to Isaiah chapter 28. It's Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Young Zika. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Book said, to whom shall he teach knowledge? That's a question, right? He asked a question. Who is he going to teach the knowledge to? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Who is he going to teach knowledge to and who is he going to make to understand doctrine? Doctrine means what, brother? Teaching. So, you have who is going to teach the knowledge? Who is he going to teach the knowledge to and who is he going to make to understand that teaching? Two pieces of it. We always say you got to hear and you have to learn. So, on top of hearing it, you have to learn it, which means you have to understand it. All right? Anybody who has not heard and learned, there's no way you can come to the sun. All right? You have to, one, hear the word. And you can't just be a hearer of the word, a forgetful hearer if you don't do it. So you have to do it. And the only way to do it is if you understand it. All right? Keep going. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So he said, is it going to be the ones that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast? That means a young, all right? A baby, all right? Is he going to be teaching the knowledge and making, making the babies to understand the doctrine, the teaching? All right, let's see. For precept must be upon precept. So he's telling you how you have to handle it. He said, how's a baby going to handle this? Precept has to be upon precept. He asked the question. He said, who going to teach the knowledge? Who going who gonna to make the understanding, the, the, the understanding, the teaching? All right? Is it going to be the babies? Because you got to be able to put precept on top of precept. What else? Precept upon precept, line upon line. You got to be able to take line and put that thing on top of another line. He said, how the baby going to learn this? This is Isaiah asking the question. He said, I... How are the babies going to learn? Who is going to teach? The babies going to understand it? You got to be able to put precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. What? Here a little and there a little. Here a little and there a little. You got to take a little bit from here, take a little bit from there. And what else? For with stammering lips in another tongue will he speak to this people. Mm. Right? Now he let us know. Isaiah is letting us know. He said, for with stammering lips in another tongue will he speak to this people. What does that mean for us? He's speaking to us in a way that we do not understand. Right? Isaiah's letting us, he's giving us, this, this set of verses right here gives us the entire game of how God is going to play it out. He said, you're not going to learn it as a baby because you got to be able to handle this word. How's a baby going to be able to handle the word? How's a baby going to put it? You bring out one of them thousand piece puzzles, how's a baby supposed to put that together? They're going to mash it up, put it in their mouth, make a darn mess. And that's what we see around the world right now. You see Christians mashing it up, making a darn mess, drooling all over the world. Right? You see 30,000 different denominations, everybody going different directions, claiming they're looking at the same book. You got Hebrew Israelites teaching all types of foolishness, making a mess. Right? 
You got Jewish people teaching all types of foolishness, making a darn mess. You got Muslims trying to use this book, make a darn mess of it. Everybody just make a darn mess of one book. One book. All of them can agree on one part, the Old Testament. Everybody I just named, they agree on one thing, the Old Testament. That it came from the Most High God. But they can't agree on nothing else. No matter what denomination, religion they are. It's because they haven't been able to put precept upon precept. They still babies. No, no, most of them not even babies yet. They ain't even been born yet. Right? So they can't handle the word. And we tried to get out there. And none of us have considered that the man told us himself that he will speak to us in a language that we wouldn't understand. And with the stammering lips. That would read that one from one more time. For stammering lips in another tongue, will he speak to this people? He said, I'm speaking to this people with stammering. I'm coming to him with a stutter. Which makes us say what? What are you trying to say to me? That's why when we open up this book and we try to read it and we try to get into it, we get to praying. We say, God, can you just give me a message? Can you just help me understand? You know, are we telling God in a different way? What are you trying to say to me? That's why people write these books. Uh, what, what's the books they write? A purpose-driven purpose -driven life. Purpose-driven life and a power. Right? Of Find your woman. purpose in God. You right. know what all that book is trying to tell you? This is what God is trying to say to you. Now, they make a darn mess of it because they don't know what God's saying. Right? But you see all these books and all these resources because they know it's a need right. to find out what is God trying to say. Go. Oh. But we haven't considered, we all feel like it's something wrong with us. When we look into this book and we don't understand it, or we get stuff wrong, or we try to look into it and we bump our head and we go this direction, go that, we think it's something wrong with us. Nobody stopped and considered and say, this is exactly how the man set it up. He set it up for us to bump our heads and to look at it and to say, you know what? This don't make no darn sense because you have to be an adult. And when I say adult, I don't mean age. I'm talking about you have to be well-mannered in the way of the Most High God. Otherwise, you won't be able to handle the word. You have to put precept upon precept. You have to be able to let the man talk to you, and you're not going to understand what the man says. It's a whole different language. I mean, you got to learn that. You got to get used to the stammer. Right? When the man talks to you in parables, you sitting there like, well, I don't know what God was talking about when he talking about two lions. You know what I'm saying? Lions. Lion's whelp, and then the eagle came by and picked up a darn worm. I don't know what this is talking about in Ezekiel. Right? You got to be able to look at it, and the man is talking to you in a stammer at that point. What are you trying to say? But eventually you learn and you start getting used to it. You mean, oh, okay, so the lions represent the kings of Judah. Oh, and the eagle represents Egypt. Oh, now I see what's going on. Right? You ever been around a person with a stammer, with a stutter problem? After a while, you get to know what they're talking about, huh? You be like, you get, you see that thing, you get to talk to you, be like, it's a, uh, do, 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 uh, but, do, do. Um, a brother, cut my hair, you know what I'm saying? His son got a stutter, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? His son come out there, he, he uh, you know, he be stuttering and stuff. Pops know him, though, right off the bat. He give him the time to figure it out, you know what I'm saying? Just go ahead and say it, let him finish it. They be like, yeah, son, that's right. But you got, now I'm sitting there like, I don't know what he said. Pop knew exactly what he was saying. Because he took his time. That's his son. He took his time to understand him. That's what we got to do to our father. If our father talks to him, da, 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 that's what he's doing when he's when he giving us all these parables and all, this, all these mysteries. He's speaking to us in a way we don't understand. How many times, how much of a, how, uh, what are we going to do if we, if we don't take the time to understand the man? If we just say, oh, well, I don't get it. So I just, you know what people do? I don't get it. So I'm just going, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going to make it up. Make it up. I don't get it. So I'm just going, I mean, you know what? I don't exactly know what it means that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. So you know what I'm going to say? You can do whatever you want now. Because, I mean, I can't break it down. I haven't been able to break it down and be like, okay, is the law done away with? Do, it, do I have to keep the Ten Commandments? Is it only the Ten Commandments? Or do I have to keep everything that's written in the law? I mean, can I still have two wives? Or No, I mean, you're trying to break that thing down. Like, what is... What's there, what's not, what applies, what don't apply, what's a sin, what's not a sin. And you know what? Since I really just don't get it, since he's still talking to me in a stammer, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to make it up from here. Give me, uh, Isaac, go ahead and finish this out real quick. He said, for, for with stammering, stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. 
to whom he said, This, this is, is the rest, rest wherewith ye may cause the, the weary, weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. But what? Yet they would not hear. That's where we get messed up at. Whole thing is a trap. He set it up that way just so just so we could do exactly what the most of the people doing. They won't hear. He come to him talking some mystery stuff. He's like, man, I just don't get it, so I'm just gonna do it this way. I'm just gonna take a wild guess and say, mm, that's the answer. Right? That's because you won't hear. You haven't taken the time to understand the man. You haven't put any time into understanding what the man is saying. You just took it at first rip, looked at it and say, I don't get it, so it must mean this. That's not what the man asked you to do. So he's speaking to you with another tongue, with stammering lips. And the whole purpose, they wouldn't hear. For what reason? Keep going. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For what reason? That they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. He makes you put precept on precept, line on line, and take a little bit from here and a little bit from there, that you might go backwards and be broken and be snared and taken. The whole thing is a trap from the Most High God. Is it meant to trap a saint? Absolutely not. It's meant to trap anybody who don't take the time to listen to the man. So no, it's not supposed to be easy. Not in the sense that y'all think not, not for a sinner. If you come in, if you come out the gate and you ain't never committed a sin and ain't got no intention to ever commit a sin, it's supposed to be easy for you. It's supposed to be easy. Right? That's why y'all sure was able to make it through. It's not supposed to be easy for a sinner. You sinned? And you like sinning? You enjoy it? Oh, no, that thing's supposed to be real hard. It's supposed to be hard to try to come out of that. It's supposed to be hard to understand the man. Right? We have to set ourselves up and let us know. We have to count the cost. That's why in Luke 14, the man, he, Yahushua, he told us. He said, what man going to start building a building and then get halfway through it and realize, you know what, I ain't even got the materials to finish it. He said, pay attention. Make a plan before you do it. Is this for you? That's why y'all y'all not going to see me ever ask y'all to go stand in the middle of the street and go to the strip and get telling people, God loves you. Repent, turn away from your sins so you don't go to hell. That don't make no sense. Why would we do that? These people got to count the cost. Well, I'm going to try to convince you to do something you ain't got the material to do. God didn't give it to everybody to be saved. He said few. So if I sit here and I try to tell you, you know what, everybody's going to be saved, I'm a liar. And that's not what the book said. I'm going to tell you, if you're going to be saved, you got a chance if you obey this word. Many going to be searching. If, it's meant, so let's, if many are searching, but few going to be saved, why am I going to waste my time on a man walking that way when I know the, when the man to get to is this way? Wouldn't it make more sense? Okay, I see seven people coming this way, a thousand people going that way. Let me, let me go ahead and check out the people that's coming this way at first, right? And if I get past these seven, I ain't got nobody else coming this way. All right, maybe I'll touch the closest person walking that way. But let's say priorities. When do you see Paul go after just the most wretched sinner? Never. He went to the synagogue. He went to people that was looking for God. And you know what? The, the Gentiles overheard him speaking. And that's when the Gentiles said, you know what, Paul? Come over here. We want to hear what you're talking about. He didn't go to them Gentiles talking about, I want you guys to hear. They asked for him. This whole thing been out of order. That's why we can't get nothing moving. Everybody's trying to move in their own direction, trying to figure it out. They taking a the guess because it's precept upon precept. You haven't put the line on top of the line. You haven't taken a little bit from here and put it over there. So now how, who understands? And who's going to lead us out of it? If everybody walking in a circle and everybody blind, grab 29. I ain't want this. I ain't want to get talking about all this. Grab 29. This is Isaiah chapter 29. Give me verse 9. That's why I love this book. You got Isaiah 28, verse 9. You jump the next darn chapter. Isaiah 29, verse 9. Both of them go together. Watch this. Stay yourselves in wonder. Cry he said, stay out. yourself in wonder. Sit your butt down. Sit down. That's what he's telling you. Sit down. Pay attention. Stay yourselves in wonder. What else? Cry ye out and cry. Mm -hmm. They are drunken, but not with wine. He said they drunk, but it ain't with no wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. They sitting here falling all over their darn self, but them boys ain't drunk. 
For the Lord has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep mm. and has closed your eyes. Mm. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, has he covered. Who going to teach us? We ain't got no prophets. We don't have rulers that can teach us. Who going to teach us? Why do you think we in the state that we in? He closed our eyes. This stuff is by design. Don't be sitting here looking at man, you know, oh man, this, that, and other. This stuff is by design. Most of our God know what he's doing. How our captivity going to stick if all of us know, know who we are? If we all just know how to understand the word and we obey it. How the captivity going to stick? How are you going to put a curse on us at that point? We talked about the curses last week. That was cur That had to happen. Most of our God said, okay, now I got to mess up the kids. Right? Our father sinned years ago. He told them exactly how that thing was going to play out. So he can't have us knowing who we are and obeying the word. That don't make no sense. You got to make it difficult. I got to put some obstacles in the way now. Right? Because who going to pay for the sin? Who, who going to have to deal with the who Who sins? The sins of the father are going to be visited on who? The children. He's not going to lie to you. He's not going to make up something that ain't. that. He's not going to say something to you and it don't happen exactly how you say it. Right? So as soon as people get talking about me, that's unfair. I didn't even do it myself. The man already told you how I play. Then he come back in Ezekiel and he told you, don't think that you guilty of your father's sin now. I'm just saying, I'm going to put an obstacle in your way because of your father's sin. That thing going to be a little bit tougher for you because of your father's sin. You can still choose to do the right thing. You're not guilty of your father's sin. You just got to deal with it. Right? That's just life. That's just natural. I'm driving a car. My son in the car with me. Right? I just, you know what I'm saying? I just want to take a little drink. I end up taking a little drink, but you know I just want to take a little more. Then I take a couple more. This is my sin that I'm doing right now, right? Is it my son's sin? No. Now when I crash that darn car, right? And he paralyzed. I'm dead. He paralyzed for the rest of his darn life. Right? Is that his sin? Or is that my sin? Yours. Still my sin. Guess who got to deal with some of it, though? That's life. There are consequences to everything that we do, and the consequences most of the time don't just affect us. That's all the most high God trying to let us know. Stop being stupid. Obey my word. Why are you gonna sit here and be foolish? You think it's not gonna affect your kids? He know we love our kids. That's why he told them. Sins of the father gonna come against the children now. Because he know we love our kids. We Hebrews. That's these Gentiles that don't love their kids and be treating their kids all that type of way. We learn that stuff from them. We love our kids. We got our father. Our fathers now, they, they split off, leave their kids, this, that, another. Man, we learn that stuff from Gentiles. You look at our fathers in the book, man, you see the kids went with the father. What you talking about? That's crazy. Only way, only way the son got the son got to be rejected like Abraham's son. Right? When it came to Ishmael, Ishmael, he was like, get your butt up out of here. Go on with your mama. That's because he was rejected. That's because his wife said, get that bond woman and that boy out of here. That's the only way you go on with your mama, if you rejected. Other than that, everybody come with me. Yeah, Abraham was upset about it, too. Yeah, he was mad about that. That's my boy. Most our God told him, he said, listen to your wife. You know what I'm saying? Abraham could have said, put his foot down. Most our God came through, boy, you better listen to your wife. Like, I got that. You know, I said, get your butt up out of here, boy. I, I can try to catch you out on weekends or something. I don't know. Right? What you going to do? But that was, our, that was us. Right? You see Jacob. Jacob had four baby mamas. <laughs> that is, he had four baby mamas. All the boys. Who they sent her around? Yeah. I got that. That's art. That's us. All this stuff. We just got to relearn our culture. All, the, all our dads, you know what I'm saying, doing all this stuff. That's crazy. That crazy because we've been brainwashed and our culture has been stolen from us. We would never do it. Our women would be pristine. Our women would be holy. Our women would, our women would be delicate. Don't even want to put their feet on the darn ground. Right? You can see it in our women now. There's a lot of our women won't step outside with no shoes on. There's a lot of them that will too though. Right? This stuff is in us. We got to be brainwashed to get it out of us. Who going to teach it to us? Who going to see it? Can't nobody see it because the man told us we were blind. Read it. 
For the Lord has poured upon you the spirit of deep sleep. He said he poured up upon you the spirit of deep sleep. And has closed your eyes. Okay. The prophets and your rulers, the seers have he covered. Okay. And the vision of... words of a book that is sealed which men deliver to one that is learned saying read this i pray thee uh-huh and he says i cannot for it is sealed uh-huh and the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he says i am not learned okay wherefore the lord said for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me but have removed their heart far from me he said they remove their heart far from me and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men their fear towards God is taught by the precept of men. You know what that means? They had to make it up. They didn't understand the word. He was talking to them in a different language. They didn't understand it. So you know what they had to do? They had to fill it in with their own teaching. The part that they didn't get, they put their own teaching in. So now I'm teaching you how to fear God. I'm teaching you how to love God. I'm teaching you how to be a sinner. I mean, be a, be a Christian. Same thing. Right? I'm teaching you how to be all these things. And you know what? I got to teach you my way because I don't understand what the man is trying to teach you. That's a problem. Let me fix the camera real quick. I don't know what's going on here. Let's see here. That's a problem. Why we need a choir. <laughs> and Christian got one thing right, you know what I'm saying? He know how to feel some darn time. But let me tell you, them mimes that be doing them dances creep me out. No, nah, you can't play that type of stuff. I don't Bro, know what's that going. thing creeps me out. I don't know where they get this stuff. I don't know, but that thing's scary. Would you bring a darn mime in? And what does that have to do with the word of the most high God? That thing. They show be having in mind, so that thing, I was looking, I remember the first time I saw that, I said, okay. They love it, too. I was like, okay, I these, guess. These praise dancers, I was like, what? Praise dancers? That ain't crazy. I want to know where it came from. Like, literally, can somebody, like, break it down for me, like, the education about that? Just tell me. Ain't nobody going to be able to break that down for you. I don't know where that thing came from. All right? So we look at it, we see in the book. That the man is very clear about what he what he what he wants from us. He just wants us to pay attention, be along for the ride, stick it through until you figure it out. Grow into it. Right? You're not gonna get it all on the first day. You might. I ain't gonna say you're not. You know what I'm saying? Don't let me, I'm gonna tell you what God ain't gonna do for you. I ain't gonna say you're not gonna get it on the first day. But you shouldn't expect to get it on the first day. That's not what the book told you. You should expect everything that the book tells you, that's what you expect. If the man tells you he's not gonna give it to the babies. You shouldn't expect to walk in on day one and get it. That means you got to grow with it. Right? That's why he said you have to come on to them as children. Children don't understand. When I tell my boy, get your butt over here. When I tell your boy, stand, get your butt out the street. When I tell your boy, put on, put on your darn seatbelt. He don't understand the intricacies of why I'm telling him to do it. He just know daddy said do it and he going to whoop my butt if I don't. That's the fear of God. I don't understand why the most high God said do this and don't do that. All I know is he going to whoop my butt if I don't. What happens at, What happens when my boy grow up? All of us, we look back and we be like, that's what my dad meant. My dad was right. That's what my mama was trying to say. Every last one of us, we, we grow up and had that same, we look back and had that same, because you have to grow. Why do you think the word is any different? Let's get into this law. So last week we talked about Deuteronomy chapter 28, right? We went, we went through all the curses and we kind of looked at what the most high God was trying to, trying to lay out in front of us, right? And our whole purpose, remember, one of the things that we want to look at when we're dealing with this book is we want to try to understand the character of God because that's the part that's been robbed from us, right? We've lost who God really is. So, and then we have starting to allow people to tell us who God is by their own precepts, right? By their own traditions. By own, their own thoughts. So now we want to know who is God really? God, for us, is going to be the God that in Deuteronomy chapter 27, by halfway through, he started giving us curses. 
And after every curse that he gave us, he said, let the people say amen. So he spent half, a, half of one chapter giving us all curses, right? Half of the chapter, just all curses. Then he going to the next chapter, about the first 14, 15 verses of that chapter. That's all blessings. Right? So you got maybe 14, 15 curses, then maybe 14, 15 blessings. Then right after that, he get right back into the curses. And he take you from, I think, verse, maybe verse 16 all the way to verse 68. Right? Somebody do the math on that. What is that? 52. Right? 52. 52 different verses full of curses. So what's more? Curses are, 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 are the blessings. So now we have to understand what type of man we're dealing with when we're dealing with God. God is not coming to us trying to hang over us all the pretty stuff and make that the focal point. But that's what we get when we get to go to church. We go to these churches, you know what they hang over? God is good. He loves you. Forgiveness. Grace. Just, I mean, just accept. Forgive yourself. That's your problem. God is already forgiving you. Right? They give us all of the all the things that would be attractive. That's not his approach. He began with curses. Then he talked about a little bit of little bit of blessings. Then he got it, but right back to the darn curses. Ended off the chapter with curses, right? So after we get done with that, we're gonna see what else the man is gonna say to us. It's Deuteronomy chapter twenty nine. I want verse one. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter twenty nine, verse one. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 1. The page is stuck together. Yeah. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab, beside the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. In the land of what? Moab. So notice they in the land of Moab. Let me get a map up. Let me get a map up so we can take a look at it. You know what I'm saying? We ain't been really looking at maps, but I got some maps now, so. So now, if you look at it, I'll get the map up. Eyes to see and ears to hear unto this day. And I have led you forty years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxing old upon you, and your shoe is not waxed old upon your foot. You have not eaten bread, neither have ye drink wine of strong drink. That ye might know that I am Yahuwah, the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. And when ye came unto this place, Sihon, the king of Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, came out against us to battle. All right. We, we smoked them. We did what? We smoked them. Not smoked them. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Ain't no game banger. Now he said he smote them. All right? He, he, he hit them. He beat them. All right? So they beat them to the punch. They got them. 
All right, keep going. And we took their land and gave it for an inheritance unto the Reubenites and unto the Gadites and unto the half tribe of Manasseh. Uh huh. So going. all that land that we was looking at on that map, where we are standing at, we defeated some people over there and we took that part of the land. Now initially, that's not necessarily what we was going after, but since they start messing around and fooling with us, we said, okay, we gonna take that. Initially, the Most High God said we couldn't have that land. If we look at Deuteronomy chapter one. He said, no, nah, you can't have that land. You know what I'm saying? He gave that to the Moabites. Remember, the Moabites are who? Uh, Lot's descendants. That was Lot's descendants. Remember, we Abraham descendants. Lot was Abraham's nephew. Right? So that's, that's our family, Moabites. You know what I'm saying? Ammonites, same thing. Lot's descendants. That's our family. But you're going to see, since they fooled around with us, Most High God said, get they butt. He wouldn't let us get the Edomites. Right? He wouldn't let us get the Edomite. He said, no, you leave them Edomites alone. Again, Edomites descendants of who? Esau. Descendants of Esau. That's our brother. Jacob's twin brother. Right? That was Jacob's twin brother. That's our brother. So he wouldn't let us get them. He said, no, 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 you pass by them. Right? So that's kind of where we are right now. So we ended up taking some of that land. And uh, eventually we'll take all of that land on that side. Then we're going to walk across and we're going to take that land as well. Keep going. Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them that ye may prosper in all that you do. Uh huh. Ye stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God, your captains and your of your tribes, your elders and your officers, with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and the stranger that is in thy camp, from the hewer of thy wood unto the drawer of thy water, that you should enter into the covenant with the Lord thy God and into his oath which the Lord thy God makes with thee this day, uh -huh. that he may establish thee today for a people unto himself, and that he may be unto thee a God, That's as right. he has said unto thee, and as he has sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Mm -hmm. Neither with you only, neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that stands here with us this day before and who the else? Lord our God. And him that stands here with us this day before the Lord our God. Uh huh. And also with him that is not here with us this day. So notice, he said, I didn't just make this covenant with everybody that's standing here. He said, Oh, I'm also making it with the ones who are not standing here. You know what that does? That puts everybody under the law. That puts everybody under the law. That's why when Paul said, came, he said, What did Paul say? What I'm trying, what I'm thinking of right now. What I want. Ah. What do you say? No, ye not. Give me Romans chapter 3. All oh, that is those laws under the law or bound by the law. Something like that. Yeah, give me Romans 3, maybe about verse. It's something like that. It's uh, Romans 3, give me maybe verse uh, 5. Maybe verse, maybe verse 6 or 7. Something indebted to the whole law. That was a uh, that we just came out of. Yeah, that was Deuteronomy twenty nine. Where we leave off? Uh, verse fifteen. That was Deuteronomy twenty nine, verse fifteen. We read from one to fifteen. All right. For what if some did not believe? Shall the unbelief make the faith of God without effect? That's verse three. Verse five is. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Give me verse 9. What then? Are we better than they? No, and no wise. For we have before proved both he, Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to start there? Yeah. What then? Are we better than they? This is what verse? 9. So this is uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 9. He said, what then? Are we better than they? Uh-huh. No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As, uh -huh. it, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Okay. There is none that understands. There is none that seeks after God. Uh -huh. They are all gone out of the way. They uh -huh. are together become unprofitable. There is none that does good, no, uh -huh. not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is in their lips, is under their lips. Uh huh. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. The they, their feet swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. Mm -hmm. In the way of peace have they not known. Mm -hmm. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law says, it says to them who are under the law. It says to who? 
them that are under the law. Okay, keep going. That every mouth may be stopped. Uh huh. And all the world may become guilty before God. All the what? World may become guilty before God. So what thing the law say? The law says it to who? Uh, every mouth may be stopped. No, it said what thing the law say? It says it, it says to who? To them that are under the law, who are under the law. So how in the world, if all only Israel is under the law, how in the world is the whole world's mouth stopped? Because they are guilty before God. Everybody under the law. He said he just told you I make this covenant not only with the ones that standing here, but they don't know it yet, but the ones that's not standing here too. That mean I get all the people that ain't born yet. All that said, he said everybody under this law. You may not know it, you may not acknowledge it, right? Everybody under the law. That's why when they get talking that done away stuff, this law done away with stuff. Oh well, you know, sir, they they try to split these people. These people are so horrible. They had split up the law. Even Hebrews would do this. They had split up the law. They said, well, see, the dietary law is still in effect. When you ever read anything in this book about a dietary law? Just take me to one verse that say dietary. You've never read it. These people make it up. There's no diet. There's a law. The whole thing go together. How you going to split it up and say this, this applies and that don't? The sacrificial law is done away with. Stop that line. You ain't never seen nothing talking about a sacrificial law. Nothing done away with. You just don't have a priest in the temple. Let him erect a priest in the temple right there. Your butt better be up in there sacrificing. Boy, what's wrong with you? Are you a sinner? That's why the people, they travel all the way to Israel. They go all the way to darn Israel, and they want to celebrate the Passover. You know what they start doing? Chopping up darn lambs. Bless their darn heart. They start chopping up darn lambs. So tell me what priest sacrificed it for you. So you know what you just did? In all your zeal for righteousness, you just became a sinner. What Saul, I mean, when Saul, most high God told Saul that Samuel was supposed to do a sacrifice for him. Right? And then Saul said, you know what? Samuel taking a little too long. It's about to be a war. It makes a lot of sense. It's logical. You about to go to war, right? You got your, you a new king. Ain't like you've been here. You a brand new king. First king of Israel. You're about to go to war. People believe in you, though. It's time to go. Everybody know the prophecy. you supposed to have this sacrifice done. Right? Forget the details. It's supposed to be a sacrifice. It's about to be war right now. Everybody waiting for that sacrifice. You know we are superstitious people. So it comes to, if that sacrifice ain't done, we probably going to lose. Right? So Saul looking like, man, Samuel, late. We going to have to fight soon. You know what I need to do? I'm going to make the sacrifice instead. So I'll make the sacrifice. Samuel told you, you know what? You messed up. You should have just waited for me. How you think it's going to be when we sit here, we go all the way to Israel, we don't find a Levite. I don't find a Levite, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make the sacrifice myself. Do we not learn from what we read? Or are we just not reading it? Or is nobody teaching it to us? Might be all three. Right? It's important for us to look at it. Grab uh, Romans chapter 15. Give me uh, Romans chapter 15, verse 4. It's Romans chapter 15. Give me about verse 4. It's important when we look at this book that we get something out of it. That's why when we talk, I don't, I try not to just let it, just let it sit and we just read it and just that. That's cool. We read it, we understand it, hear the words, that's what you take. But put yourself in there. Make sure you understand what's happening. Understand the scene. Imagine it. This stuff is not there just for you to just sit here and read it like it's poetry or something. That's what, that's what we do as Christians. We look at that. Oh, well, Jesus said. Uh, what's something that Jesus say that really means something real? And they, they be taking it like that. They ain't don't mean nothing. What's something he said? Come to me who are a burden and heavy lady. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Bring on to me your burden. My burden is light. <laughs> right? They look at that. That thing just a poem for them. Like, oh, thank Jesus. The man's here and tell you, why call me ye Lord and do not obey? Oh, praise Jesus. Do you know what this man is saying? I'm not your darn master. I'm not your darn Lord if you're not doing what I tell you to do. And you know what that's going to catch them up at? They never connected the peace. You know what that's going to catch them up at? In Romans chapter 10, when they say, uh, anybody who confesses 
the Lord, their Savior, shall be saved. They love that thing. That, that tell you. See, let me tell you how you know everybody can be saved. All you got to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. And he died for your sin. That's what it say. That's what it say. You're right. That's what it say. And then the man also tells you, why call him Lord if you do not what he say? Most like God always going to cover it. So you can take your little, your little verse, but if you can't put precept on top of precept, your butt going to be gone. You'll be sitting there looking dumb before the gates. He'll look, gee, you going to turn your butt around. What you doing? He said, I never knew you. What's wrong with you? I never knew you. You've never taken the time to get to know me. You've never taken the time to understand my stutter problem. You never understand. You never tried to learn my language. How are you going to try to say we know each other? Oh, now you want to know me? Now you want to walk up to my darn gates? Get your butt away from here. Go stand out there and gnash your darn teeth. Boy, what's wrong with y'all? We've been set up to think God is playing. He's not playing with us. This man is serious. And he's sitting there the whole book telling him, how you spend two chapters talking about curses and I'm supposed to take you as a joke? Take a minute to joke if you want to. Grab uh, this Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for, written for our learning. He said if it was written aforetime, why was it written? For our learning. Okay. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So that means we're supposed to learn from what we're looking at. If we're looking at these books and we see, we see Saul making sacrifices when he's not supposed to, just taking stuff in his own hands. Right? We're supposed to learn from that type of stuff. That means it don't make no sense for me to fly and buy a ticket and go to Israel where all these Gentiles are trampling over our land and go kill me a darn lamb just because it seemed nice. Just because I want to connect back to my roots. You sit your butt in your house, you go to Walmart and go buy you a lamb. Go get you a lamb from Smith's. Put that thing on the grill and call it a darn day. You'll never keep the Passover the way the law tells you to keep it because it ain't no priest and it ain't no temple. I'm letting these people confuse us. Where would we leave off at? It was uh, Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 15. Yeah. This is Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 15. Start with the book, gotta say. For ye know how we have dwelt in the land of Egypt, and how we came through the nations which ye passed by. You have seen their abominations and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them. Mm -hmm. Lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turns away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations. Lest mm -hmm. there should be any among you a root that bears gall and wormwood. That's poison. And it come to pass when he hears the words of this curse that he bless himself in his <laughs> look, heart saying. Look, hold on. So he just got done reading us all these darn curses, right? He said, look. Y'all done seen a whole lot of foolishness. Wood, stone, idol, all types of crazy stuff y'all done seen. He said, y'all mess around and have somebody around y'all that had a heart turned towards one of these wood stuff. Y'all saw all this stuff I did for y'all. Y'all saw the plagues I put on Egypt. I didn't split a darn sea. I didn't brought y'all through it. I walked y'all through the wilderness for 40 years. Your darn shirt still fit. Ain't no holes in it. Your shoes still work. You ain't too small for your darn feet. You ain't got a corn on your foot. I made it through all that, and y'all ain't considering that. Okay, y'all gonna mess around. I'm gonna walk y'all through this land. Y'all gonna see all these idols. Somebody gonna turn their head, and they gonna wanna bow down to one of these idols. Then watch what he say here. What, what they gonna do in their imagination? It's gonna come to pass when he hears the words of this curse. That he, he said, it's gonna come to pass. All these curses I just read to y'all. I just read to you two chapters, practically two chapters worth of uh, curses. All these curses I just read to y'all, guess what he gonna say in his heart? That he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall You have just heard all these darn curses, and somehow you got a blessing out of it. Tell me that's not what we do today. The worst stuff darn happened to us, and we look at it, you know what we say? Well, you know what? I had to go through that, because God had to bring me where I am today. I just want to know how do you, the most I got is beating your butt and you just find that your po positive optimistic self find a blessing out of that thing somehow that's a hard heart that's a hard darn heart there most I got telling you I'm beating your butt I'm not messing with you right now my back is towards you and you know what you look well you know what God the good thing about your back is 
I know someday you're going to turn around for it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Look at it. He said, watch it. Matter of fact, people think we make this stuff up if it wasn't in the book. They think we just make this stuff up. Read it. Watch it. He said, you hear all these cursing. What you going to do in your imagination? Past, when he hears the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace. <laughs> Though I walk in the imagination of my own heart to add drunkenness to thirst. The Lord will not spare him, but the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man. And all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him. And the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. What you think you're going to escape? I don't care what you say in your, the, you got you know you know you know what they got our people doing now that positive affirmation stuff. You can look yourself in the darn mirror, repeat that bull crap all you want. The man put a curse on you. What you gonna do with it? Tell yourself that you're gonna have peace. Tell yourself your day is gonna be good. Tell yourself all you want until you look at the man. You say you know what? I right, grab a uh, Leviticus for me. Leviticus, what is that? What I want. 27 or 26? 26. 26. 26. Give me Leviticus chapter 26. What verse? You know? No, I'll find it though. I want to say it's Leviticus chapter 26. It's deep in there. Maybe like 50 something. Maybe 52. Yeah, it's towards the end. Man, Leviticus chapter 26. Let's start at 52. Let's see if that's what I want. But at some point, you got to look at the man. You got to say, you know what? God is not happy with me right now. I don't get, look, I don't even care. Me personally, this is me talking. It's not God. I don't personally care. If you keep on sinning, what I don't want you to do is keep on sinning and tell yourself, God is okay with me right now. If you're going to keep on sinning, at least tell yourself, I'm on my way right to hell. I made, the, I made a conscious decision. I'm about to do this because I like doing it. But at the same time, I'm going right to hell. It ain't, it ain't no escape. I'm going right. If the most high God strike me right now, I'm going right to hell. Because in that, there's repentance, right? In that knowledge, just knowing that and acknowledging that. You can repent. You can't repent from I'm doing the wrong thing, but you know what? It's right. What you if you doing the right thing, what you gonna turn away from? It's me talking now. It ain't God. It ain't no book. I ain't I ain't pointing out though. It's me talking. My advice, if you gonna sin, sin. Do, do what you're gonna do. I ain't gonna try to convince you not to darn sin, sin. But just be honest with yourself while you're doing it. That way, if the most high God decide to have mercy on your soul. At least you have some space to turn away. Your mind won't go to pray. Right? That's me talking. This, this book, though. This is Leviticus chapter 26. Give me about verse 51. Verse 27. Verse 27? Yeah, nah, it gave me no dark 27. And if you will not, for all this, hearken unto me, but walk contrary to me, you know, walk contrary it's to me. It's 27? I thought it was yeah. deep in that thing. All right. All right. Stand okay. corrected. It's uh, Leviticus chapter 26. Give me a little bit before 27. Do I want a little bit, or is it 27 what I want? You, could, you can go with 25, I guess. All right, this is Leviticus chapter 26, verse 25. Okay, we'll do 23. This is 23? Yeah. This is Leviticus chapter 26, verse 23. And if ye will not be reformed by me, by these things... Pay attention to what he's saying. He's saying, if you won't be reformed, I'm beating your butt right now. I am putting curse after curse on you. I'm slapping you around. I'm making your life difficult. I'm losing. I'm your job is being gone before because of me. You darn, you darn losing your place. You got to live on the darn street. You lost your woman. You lost everything you got. You lost your man. You lost your child. Whatever you lose, you losing it. You losing it. Losing it. Losing it. And he said, if after all this you won't be reformed because of me, you won't change. After all this I'm doing, you still won't change. What's gonna happen? If you will not be reformed by me, by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then I will also walk contrary unto you and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. Mm -hmm. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. Mm -hmm. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven. Mm -hmm. and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and you shall eat it and not be satisfied. Mm -hmm. And if you will not for all He's this... He's talking about famine at that point, right? If you Keep will going. not for all this, hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me. Can you me. imagine ten women trying to use the same darn oven? Can you imagine that? My mom and my wife were staying here not too long ago, and it was darn habit. Can you imagine ten women trying to use one darn oven? 
Knowing one of them going to like it clean the specific way. You know it's rough. Then they're going to bring you your bread by measure. That means there ain't even enough bread. You be like, yeah, well, you know, 10 women, we all trying to cook it up. It's only a month, though. All right. Most I got trying to tell y'all something. Keep going. And if you will not hearken, if you will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then I will walk contrary unto you also. He said, I'm going to walk contrary also. unto you. In fury. Uh huh. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. Uh huh. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters ye shall eat. And I will destroy your high places and cut down your images and cast your carcasses upon the carcass of your idols. And my soul shall hate you. That's right. He said, My soul, so, soul shall do what? Abhor you. It's going to, so hold on. Let me, let me just make sure. He said, My soul shall abhor you. That can't be what it say. It had to say, my, my soul shall abhor the sin and not the sinner. My soul shall abhor you. You mean to tell me these Christians been lying to me my whole life? God hate the sin and not the sinner. That must, you must not be reading the right version. We got to go to the new standardized, Christianized version or something. Mm -hmm. Right? We look at this. The book is very clear. Man don't play with sin. Right? Verse 40? Yeah. All right, this uh, this verse 40. Oh, my bad. Where did I leave off? Okay. We're going to jump on down to verse 40. What does it say? If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers uh -huh. with their trespass. This is, how we, this is how we be reformed. Confess our iniquity. And not only does, notice what he's saying, the iniquity of our fathers. With their trespass, which and when I say fathers, I don't mean our dads, right? I mean our ancestors. We have to learn the book. We have to see what they did wrong. And then we have to confess to God they but was wrong. And that's why we in this predicament that we in. And on top of that, I've been wrong. Keep going. And if they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, mm -hmm. and that they also have walked contrary unto me, mm -hmm. and that I also... So notice walked. what he's asking you to do. Confess your sins, the iniquity of your fathers, and all of the trespasses involved in that, and then also the fact that you have walked contrary to him. He wants you to confess that. He wants you to admit, you know what, God? I've been walking contrary to you. What else does he want you to confess to you? And, and that I have also walked contrary unto them. He also wants you to confess that he has walked contrary to you. Believe it or not, in the Christian churches, in these Hebrew camps, all of that is easy. Except for that last piece. Nobody want to admit that God walked contrary to him. Nobody want to admit that God, you know what they're going to tell you? Yeah, I've been down and I've been out, but God never left my side. That's what they're going to tell you. Nobody wants to admit this whole darn time I've been going through it, God been walking contrary to me. That's part of the requirement. That's part of what the man is asking you to do. You've been walking contrary to him, and in turn, he's been walking contrary to you. There's no other way to look at it. He said, if you can admit all that, now we can do some work. That's God's order. I'm not about to just jump in and start with you. I'm not about to meet you where you are. That, that stuff is a lie. He's not meeting you darn nowhere. Your butt going to straighten up, go back to the starting position, and then that's where we can start walking. Anything else is just foolishness. Grab, uh, where, where we live off? Deuteronomy what? Deuteronomy 29, what? 19? 20? So this is Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 20. 20, the last verse? Uh, no. What did it drop down to 30? It goes all the way to 29. 29, the last verse? So it's 29, 29? Yeah. Let's go ahead and finish it out. Let's go ahead and finish this chapter out. We'll see if we have enough time to jump into uh, jump into 30. The Lord will not spare him, but then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy, jealousy shall smoke against that man. And all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him. And mm -hmm. the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall separate him unto evil out of the tribes of Israel according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in the book of this law. 
Mm -hmm. So that the generation to come of your children shall rise up after you, and the stranger shall come from a far land, shall say... The stranger is going to come from where? A far land. I don't know what that's talking about. Shall say, when they see the plagues of that land and the sickness which the Lord has laid upon it, and that the whole land thereof is brimstone, brimstone and salt and burning that is not sown, mm -hmm. nor beareth, nor any grass grown therein, mm -hmm. like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, mm -hmm. Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Mm -hmm. Even all nations shall, shall say, Wherefore has the Lord done this unto this land? He's going to make an example out of it. And this is something that he already did. All right? And it, is, and it, and it still is in the process of doing. All right? He said, Wherefore what? Wherefore has the Lord done thus unto this land? This is what he's saying to all the Gentiles going to say. Gentiles are going to be looking. Why did God do this to the land? Some of this already happened, right? But in a, in a larger way, it's going to happen again. When they find out we the Israelites, when the Most High God revealed it onto the world, it's going to happen again. Be like, why in the world did the Most High God? If, so these people really the Israelites, the black folk. You telling me the slaves really was the Israelites? That's God's people. Why in the world would God do that? Ain't that, when you try to convince, you try to convince people, be like, yeah, man, we, even black folk. We Israelites, man. Is that another? What's one of their rebuttals? If we God people, why would God, right? People that don't believe the Bible, they be like, I don't see, I could never believe in a God that would make his own people slaves. Right? That's right. That's the, that's the logical thought. That's why God did it. He said, these people going to look, why in the world would God do this to his people? Wherefore? They can start out that. Wherefore? Go ahead and read that thing. Watch it. Even all nations shall, shall say, Wherefore has the Lord done thus unto this land? Mm -hmm. What meaneth the heat of this great anger? Mm -hmm. Then men shall say, Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. For they went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods whom they knew not and whom he had not given unto them. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against this land to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. We talk too much about the white folk. We talk too much about the white folk. I mean, just to be honest, we talk, too, we talk a little bit too much about what white folk did to us. Right? I mean, it could, I mean, you could easily just look at it. Wherefore, I mean, well, the weather was bad, which stopped our grass from growing and all that. I mean, that's what they could have said. But they know why, really. We talk a little bit too much. We got to do some work, all right? We got to put y'all in a position where y'all going to obey. You don't want to obey me? Okay, well, obey the white man. Obey a slave master then. You don't want to obey me? I'll be nice to you. I'm going to treat you good. I'm going to have some blessings for you do what I say. You don't want to do what I say? All right, let's see how the white man do you. Let's see how the Muslims do you, all right? Let's see how these Africans do you. Let's see how these Arabs do you. You've been enslaved by everybody across this darn world. Let's see how they do you then. You pick a people. Pick a people and see how they see if they treat you better than not treat you. Since you don't want to obey what I'm telling you to do. That way he enslaved us across the whole world to let us know it's nowhere you can go to escape. You, you take my goodness or you take my severity. Either way, you're going to have to deal with me. Keep going. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in mm -hmm. wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. Mm -hmm. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and the to our children. The secret things belong unto who? The Lord our God. It belongs to God. But everything darn revealed, who it belongs to? Belongs to us. And who else? And to our children forever. That don't we ever live. let anybody tell you that it don't mean nothing to be an Israelite. Don't ever let these people tell you. Grab a uh, whole, whole we got right there. Grab Romans chapter 3. What's wrong with this thing? My camera tripping now. Grab Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Give me verse 1. What advantage then has the Jew? Mm -hmm. Or what profit is there of the circumcision? Mm -hmm. He said, what advantage has a Jew? And what profit is there of the circumcision? 
much in every way. He said much in every single way. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. The word of God was committed unto us. That's why Moses can tell us the secret things that belong to God. Everything that's revealed though, that belong to us. And it belong unto our children. Don't ever let nobody tell you it don't mean nothing to be an Israelite. Oh yeah, it do. Chiefly, because the word of God was committed on. Got a whole nation pretending to be us. Obviously, it means something. Yeah, they know it means something. They get to don donate money to the Jewish people. They know that it means something then. And you know when it stopped meaning something? When we can prove to them that, that the black people are the Hebrew, the ones that they enslaved the Hebrew. That when, well, you know what? It just doesn't matter. Color doesn't matter. I'm trying to figure out how color stopped matter. Every darn picture of Jesus I saw was white. It ain't like we had a rainbow. G. It ain't like he just ran. A, it ain't like we just, you know, you you take, you got gumballs. When was the last time you was, you went to the gumball machine, you put the quarter in there, and you twist it around, and you were shaking around like, I want the purple one. You know what I'm saying? I, I got to get the purple. No, you just twist it around. You don't care what color you get. That's how Jesus is. If color didn't matter in my mind, that's how Jesus should have been. You know, you just walk into one church. Oh, look at the purple Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Look at the Japanese Jesus. I like that Jesus. You know what I'm saying? That thing should be different. Like, everywhere you go, random. It don't work out like that. Every one of them thing, he white or he Mexican. Sometimes he mixed, white and Mexican, right? You don't never have one where it's just like, you know what, you randomly walk into this nice Catholic church and you just got a black nappy head Jesus just hanging on the wall. You'll never see it. That you're going to one of these black Catholic, Catholic churches. They might do it out there in Africa. They got some Catholic churches. They might do it out there, right? You go to one of these white people, they make them look like their own people. Wherever you go, God going to look like you. Whole time the book tell you he looked like me. He looked like our people, right? You know what's the name of that place where the Pope stand? Uh, the Vatican. The Vatican. Did you know Jesus is black with all the dead walls, all the mirrors? All the hidden ones. All the hidden ones, yeah. Cause they got they got the ancient stuff. They they they, they whitewashed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They got the ancient stuff. They know what it is. We showed some of the pictures when we were doing our, our uh, presentation. We showed some of the pictures that they got. They got all types of stuff. They got the ancient stuff. They got people that walked around. They knew, They at that point, they knew exactly who the Hebrews were. It was no no secret. Everybody knew the Hebrews were black. So it wouldn't make sense to hang this white Jesus on the wall. That that would just be stupid. Everybody looking like, what in the world? What you doing? Wasn't he, wasn't he a Hebrew? I'm standing right next to a Hebrew right now. He's blacker than night. That don't make no sense. So at, at some point, we had to just erase the minds of the people of what he looked like. Let's tuck all these away. And you get further, far enough away, okay, I can dress them up and I can make them look like this. Yeah, they make a fool out of it. That stuff done, though. That's over with. We ain't got much time left. That stuff over with. All this, all this walking around being stupid, not knowing who we are, that stuff done. All right, you got to choose to be stupid now, ain't going to come out though for sure right go ahead and wrap up this chapter Romans or Deuteronomy uh, Deuteronomy chapter 29 the secret things belong unto the Lord our God but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law that's it right so that's the whole purpose of everything we look in this book that we do what the most high God told us to do and that's keep the law. You know what the law going to point us to? Yahushua. You know what Yahushua going to point us back to? The law. It's only one way. It's only one way. It's not the law or Yahushua. It's only one way. You're going to keep the law. You're going to find out you're a sinner. Right? And you're going to find out, well, I need to remove this curse from me. Therefore, I need Yahushua. You're going to go to Yahushua. He going to tell you to obey him. You're going to do everything that Yahushua say if you want to get into the kingdom. You're going to get into the kingdom. He's going to resurrect you. He's going to put the law on your heart. And guess what you're going to be doing at the end of it? Keeping the law. All right? That's our goal. That's our whole duty. All right? That's what Ecclesiastes told us. It's a very clear picture, and it's in the book. we just been confused because they mix it up for us. People don't want to accept this piece. They didn't understand that piece, so they made it up. They fill the gaps with their own in intellect. Right? We done with that. But the book say that's what we roll with. If it say it, that's what we roll with. If I don't understand it, I'm going to roll with it exactly how I say it. 
That way you'll never hear somebody, you know what I'm saying? You uh you know what I'm saying? You people look at it and be like, you know what I'm saying? Oh no no no, I don't uh I'm trying to think, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't uh what's something that you know people look at in the law they don't quite understand. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? How you gonna how you just gonna let him kill a Canaanite? Not getting You ain't about to let don't bad mouth him. Not keeping a sack. You don't get it? That's fine. Right? You don't get it the you don't get how he he just let her kill a Canaanite, that's fine. Don't you darn bad mouth it. He ain't tell you to kill one now. If he tell you to kill one though, you go kill it. What you talking about? Just roll whatever it say. Yeah, people gonna call you stupid. People gonna call you a whole lot of stuff. You know what? That's my daddy. I'm gonna do what my daddy told me to do. And eventually you understand. You'd be like, oh, the Canaanites, they mix with the Nephilim. Oh, because the Canaanites mix with the Nephilim, they had to go. Their blood was perverted. That's why he said we couldn't mix with the people. Right? He said don't take them for marriages. But all that comes with understanding. If we have to know and understand all the detail before we obey, you ain't never going to darn and obey. Their iniquity was full also. Their iniquity is full as a result of them go. Remember, he told Abraham, that's going to be your land, but don't go over there until your iniquity is full. I mean, until their iniquity is full. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Same but he happened. set them up from the get-go because of who they mixed with. Same thing happened when they took us up out of there. Yep. I was like, I'm done with y'all. Yeah. Everybody that got their land taken out was the reason why. Because the iniquity is full. Any questions? Okay, I had enough with them sinners over there. Y'all go ahead and take that land. Go you know what I'm saying? Go ahead, go ahead and switch them out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Musical chair. Everybody want Israel, huh? Israel, think about it. Israel started off with the Canaanites. All right? Canaanite moved them out the way for the Israelites. All right? Israelites in there now. Now, Israelites sin. All right? Assyria, go ahead and get you a little piece of this land. Then Assyria come in and get a little piece of the land. Right? Then moved them out the way. Judah. You know what I'm saying? Judah's still there. All right, Babylon. You know what I'm saying? Come on, get you a little piece of the land. Babylon, get a little piece of the land, too. Now, after that, after Babylon, who came after Babylon? Persia. Persia, right? Persia. The Medes and the Persians. You know what I'm saying? Medes came first. Then you come, then, then come the Persians. All right, y'all get y'all take the land, too. You know what I'm saying? Now after the Persians, the Grecians, Javon came. You all right? Javon. Right? Came, he take the land. Okay, Grecian take it. You know what I'm saying? They start polluting our stuff. Where you get Maccabees from. You know what I'm saying? The books of Maccabees. You know what I'm saying? That's where that came from. It came from the time that the Grecians were running things. And after that, the Romans come. Romans come, okay, y'all take the land too. They get us up out of there completely. Romans do. Ain't nobody else. Everybody else, they didn't get us out of there completely. Romans, they got our butts out of there completely. Sent us way down into Africa, took some and slaves into Europe and all that type of stuff. Got us out of there completely. Right? It was like, okay, all right, well, you know what I'm saying? Land empty. You know who came after that? Them darn Arabs. Them Arabs said, this is us now. Arab came, you know what I'm saying? Then a little bit after that, you got these Jewish people. Christians, then the Jewish. Yeah, Christian. Yeah, you right. Christian, yeah, Christian, yeah, Christian, yeah, Christian, yeah. Christian was on there. Actually, Christian was on there the whole time. Romans was on there. Yeah, they just took it. <clears throat> Try to take it from the Muslims. Try to uh, take it back. Muslims uh, try to take it back. Christian and Muslim were fighting. You had the Crusades and all that different stuff, right? Then you had the Jewish people later on. They came and they said, you know what? We claim this land. They had a little money, made a couple back deals, back, back room deals with, with uh, all these other nations. They set it up to where they could do it. They fund their wars. Right? That's, what it really, that's what really happened. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, these Jewish people that robbed, they robbed Germany thin. Right? Robbed them. Robbed them thin, making all this money off of Germany. They say that's why Hitler was really upset with them. He said, man, you robbed my people. Hitler said, you know what? Okay, I got something for you. He said, the rest of you people, they scared, they tied to your money. They ain't going to mess with you. I'm not tied to your money. I got something for you. He locked all their butts up, started getting I ain't saying what he did was right, though. That thing is kind of amusing thinking about it, though. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying it right. That's just a little amusing. You kind of just think, I, I didn't go through it. So that's fine. You know what I'm saying? We went through work. They don't laugh. They don't laugh. At, they, they don't laugh at us? They laugh at us all. Bro. Yeah, they laugh at us. I laugh at y'all too. That's all right. I think it's funny. Most I got it's funny. It's much funny to watch a sinner. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's exactly what they are. Yeah, Kazars. That's right. They got tied to the money system. That's how they could they could fund all these wars. So they fund the wars, and they say, okay, cool. That's gonna help me win. They funding both sides of it, by the way. You know what I'm saying? That's gonna help me win, right? That's what he side. So everybody, when it came to, to make peace, 
They say, okay, well, here's the terms of the peace. Y'all want to make peace. Y'all want y'all money, right? Okay, give us this land over here. That's all this small little piece of land, Israel. Don't nobody want it but these Arabs. Y'all don't care nothing about them Arabs. All right? Go ahead and give it to us. Done. And just as soon as this year, you got them talking about Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Dummy, we knew that. Why you, you know what I'm saying? What you talking about? All right? But you know how they saying that? To get at the Arabs. Get at the Arabs. So they still fighting over our land. That's all right. In due time. In due time. Everybody got to move out again. All right? I appreciate the most high God. Let's go ahead and pray out. Okay, Romans chapter 3, verse 1. This Romans chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then has the Jew? Mm -hmm. or, what pro or what profit is there of circumcision? Mm -hmm. Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Mm -hmm. You want to keep going? That book. You can't do nothing with that. I love it. Let's go ahead and pray out.